Welcome fellow Volkswagen goers. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a little do-it-yourself install, turbo inlet pipe edition. This is my friend Wavy Bone, friend Wavy Bone Mark IV. I'll add his Instagram at the bottom. Uh, and myself is Yola Root. Follow me on Instagram. So let me show you what we got in store here. There's a lot of different parts you could buy for these cars. Um, this is gonna be a stock replacement um, turbo inlet pipe. So replacing that with this one. So this car is a uh, stage one, stage one plus, I believe. Um, overall, very nice, very clean. Nice little body fit. Kenzie wheels, R triple eights, uh, 1552, or what, not 1552, it's the, uh, the coilover brand. I know you guys are here somewhere, let's see. Right there, 58 industry coilovers. So, yeah. So first step is we're gonna want to get go ahead and get this car on jack stands. All right. After you have safely put the car on jack stands, go ahead and take off your uh, battery and air intake or air box or short ant ram, whatever the heck you want to call it. Okay. Battery's out. Uh, take off your air box, air intake. Um, thought I'd mention this. So a lot of people break um, Bosch connectors because they don't know how to properly take them out. You're supposed to push down, push in, and then pull out. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Here, let's see. In, so here, in, out. Easy, right? So essentially there's a clip in here that latches over this little piece right here. Once you push that in and you push it over, watch here, push it in more over, they come out really easily, okay? So no more breaking your Bosch connectors. These are good connectors. They're not GM connectors that are crap. These are good connectors. Just learn how to take them off, take your time. If it's not coming off, don't pull harder. Just go sip a beer and come back to it, okay? So after you went ahead and removed the mask away from the uh, stock turbo inlet pipe, um, just go ahead and start loosening up all the um, accessories so your diverter valve or blow off valve if you have one of those crappy things um, I'm not going to mention the clips if they're one-time clips good luck use pliers try to break them off um, these are going to be a kind of a pain but I usually just go ahead and um, essentially lift it up from the tab here over this little nip and it usually unfolds and I could just replace it with the um, an adjustable one um, that's the easiest way uh, in my honest opinion but it's your car, so you choose what you want to do with it. Uh, these look like these have been replaced because they're all different sizes. Um, so it's going to be a constant battle going back and forth between a 7 and 8 mil and just loosening up. So we'll rendezvous. All right, so after you've taken off your uh, diverter valve, N75 valve, hockey puck for the uh, vacuum system. Um, like I said, these little things, um, I like to get, just get a flathead and kind of wrench on it until it pops off just like that. And now you saved yourself headaches and time. We're gonna remove two 16 mil bolts for the heat shield for the CV axle. Traps over just over the top like that. Comes around your five mil bolt. You have to reach a five millimeter Allen, um, which connects the uh, the stock turbo inlet pipe, okay? Um, it's gonna need some finagling. I have to push the cable up. And this is just a heat shield for your um, speed sensor for your transmission. So really just move that out the way. After that, you're just gonna go ahead and loosen it up, okay? Um, wear glasses, goggles, because shit's flying in my face and I thankfully have goggles on, so, and a headlamp as you can see. So yeah, you can see that it is uh, almost out. Go ahead and uh, remove it. Now that you've removed your 5 mil bolt, if you're not one who likes to just um, to yank on stuff, you're gonna go ahead and uh, pry with a little 
I had just a little bit. Shouldn't be on too tight. So just, just a little bit to back it off. And then you should be able to pull it up from the top of the car. Okay, you're gonna notice that it's gonna be really hard to just wiggle it out. Um, the main reason is because of the, um, the heater core um, is right there, along with some other coolant hoses. Um, if it's getting in the way, just continue to lightly wiggle, jiggle it around, get it around because of this little hard piece, these hard pieces, it's not gonna like maneuver because it's this is metal, not rubber. So um, after you've gone it up from the top, just rest it up here. And also when you're doing that, it's also good to you know remember to push these out the way because this is gonna be extra weight that you're trying to pull against. Um, so yeah, so the next thing is gonna be another one of these one-time use clips. Again, I like to use the light, uh, a thin flathead remove it from the backside, um, and then kind of clip it off. Get that flathead, turn it around, expose this piece. If it's clipped over to this end, you want to actually use this other end so it's easier to pry it over. Because if you use this and you're going against it, it's a lot harder. This is just going with it, right? Clips off. No special tools needed here. Everyone who says Volkswagens are hard to work on are... Ooh, they're just, I don't know. I don't want to say anything that's going to get people mad about the full sweating scene. But anyways, they're not hard to work on. Just work around them. So yeah, that's going to come off. Go ahead and wiggle this off. Boom. Stock turbo, turbo inlet pipe is off. Stock unit. Nothing's torn, nothing ripped. And now this is that this is out, it's a really good time to go ahead and go back underneath the car and look at the uh, turbo inducer, the compressor housing, to check if you have any shaft play, if there's any chipping. Um, that way you know, you know further down the line if you're going to need to replace a turbo or if you just want to upgrade a turbo for bigger power. All right. So although you won't be able to see the compressor wheel, um, you're able to stick your finger into it and, you know, spin it around. Now if you could hear any grinding, that's not a good sign. Go ahead and give it a grab on the middle shaft where the nut is um, and give it a little bit of a wiggle. Um, don't do it too hard, obviously. You're not trying to break things. You just want to see if things are going to break later down. And this one feels fine. Hardly any shaft play. A little bit is normal. Um, that's kind of how it is in the factory. Um, and also go around each fin, turn it, scratch them to see if they're, sh if they're smooth. Um, because if debris has gone into your um, air intake, you're gonna, it's going to create chips in them. Um, so all these thus far feel smooth, don't look jack, don't feel jagged, and that's a good sign. All right. So let me show you a comparison of the stock versus the upgraded. You're going to notice the humongous differences in them. One is going to be the size, right? Diameter. This is going to be like a pancake. This is not. This whole thing is actually a lot bigger, so... We're definitely going to have some fitment issues. We're definitely going to have to move things around. As you can see, these hoses are just, or, you know, these adapter areas are just completely off, um, which is expected. So uh, we're definitely going to have to cut some things, maneuver. We may have to adjust. We may have to adjust where this sits because um, this is probably not going to sit the same way as it used to. Um, but yeah. We're gonna just see how it goes then. Put it in first, or again, you're gonna wanna kinda snake it in, get it to the bottom, put it next to it, go from the bottom, push it in, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so cleaning this out, and I don't know if you could see it. There's def there's some blow by in there. So where is it? Come on, come on, come on. Somewhere in there. Maybe you can't see it. Or if I, it's essentially from the uh, hockey puck and the uh, diverter valve. You can see some oil residue. So gonna wipe it off clean it up all right so 
from this point, you want to first reinstall the last connection that you uh, disconnected. And it's going to be, where did it go? Did it disappear? Oh shit, did it fall back under? Oh, it's right here. This one. So it was a one-time clamp. Thank goodness I'm a car guy, so I have a shit ton of different sizes of zip ties. So prop that on there and really just fucking spit on it and tell it how well you're going to treat it so it goes on. All right. So now that that's in there, go ahead and fish it back down. And again, this is going to be an even tighter spot now with this new one than what it was previously. So again, just take your time. Don't get mad. Chill out. Everyone says, oh, I love working on cars and then get pissed off. I'm one of those people, so it's okay. I get it. But I'm not getting mad. That's the end of it. There's no way it's going to go in that way. So again, just nicely fish it down. Since this is silicone, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work down there a little bit easier than the metal did, right? Because you could move it around and squeeze it in places to get it down. So just take your time, take your time, listen to your favorite music. So I underestimated how big um, of a bore this really is. Um, things that I did to help was I removed the heat shield. I also removed the cable bracket bolts. That way the um, links actually have some play in it. So essentially you have to angle it if the inducer is this way and it's facing that way, you want to angle it this way so it faces that way, and you're gonna have to bend these over the coolant lines without trimming. Also, you're gonna notice that there is <coughs> a what did I do with it? Essentially, a clip here it is that is on the coolant line. And it's held on by, a, by a, a little bolt. Essentially, you're just gonna get a, a flathead, smack it, and it'll essentially just kind of break off. It holds the uh, the other coolant line to this hard line. Um, I don't really see that it's really that necessary, other than it keeping the bigger uh, the bigger inlet pipe from going in properly. So remove this and save some time so now that you have pulled and yanked and yelled and fucking kicked the wall and you finally got the uh, pipe on the inducer and you have made sure that it is flush all the way through go ahead and undo the zip tie all the way it's going to save you the trouble because you need the malleability of the silicone to get it into position it's going to be extremely hard to have as, as um, one of these clamps on it and try to do this, okay? Um, previously, I've also mentioned to install the uh, this small nipple piece right here prior to putting in. Um, and I found that it's actually a lot easier to do so afterwards. So now that it's already in here, you're going to yank, you're going to yank the tube all the way through and down, feed it in and tighten it. It's going to make your life a little bit easier, um, trial and error, right? Coming back from the top here, you're essentially going to want to reconnect everything, starting from here, then your N75 valve back on, along with the clip and the silver clip, because it helps retain it. You're going to want to put your hockey puck back on, and then lastly, your diverter valve. Go ahead and put your MAP sensor on, plug it in, you know, your air intake, and battery back in turn it on and it's pretty much it um, unfortunately for me it's not going to be that simple because for this one this is a for that zap zap silicone uh tip uh unfortunately the freaking hockey puck pressure valve does not fit in this it's uh, extremely way too small um it's supposed to be this size the same size essentially as your diverter but it's not so I'm having to do a lot of modifications to get this one to fit up for this for this car, unfortunately. Hopefully you do not have these issues. Hopefully you 
maybe possibly bought one that actually is a direct fit opposed to something like this. Um, yeah. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was relatively helpful in your process to install a turbo inlet pipe in your Mark IV Jetta GTR Golf. Um, overall, I don't think this uh, upgrade is all that necessary for power gains. I think doing an intercooler is going to be more, a lot more beneficial, maybe a little bit less work than something like this. It's, this is pretty tedious without the amount of gain that, you know, you may want to gain um, from it. Um, it's your car. You choose to do what you choose to do to it. Um, following states' uh, regulations for emissions, this is California. Uh, we live in California here, so everything we install here is carb legal. Yeah.